Hey YouTube. All right, it's been a while since I did a video, but been busy. Uh, here's a project that uh, I had been collecting parts and uh, trying to do for a while. So you guys saw the video of uh, me doing a square setup of the uh, Maxxis Bighorn 1.0 tires on this thing. So I did a video of that and uh, it's still up. And everybody saw that video, kind of looked good, but I didn't really enjoy how heavy it felt to um, ride around with those, uh, with those heavy tires. The Zilas are much lighter and the square setup is not that bad from factory. Um, and I have decided that I am going to go with the staggered setup instead of uh, the square setup. So expensive mistake, I bought the tires, the square setup tires, the 28, um, the 28, basically the same size as, as these, um, which is 27, 10, 14. I got the 28, 10, 14 in Bighorn uh, 1.0 Maxis. Um, didn't really like those, kind of made the diameter was okay, but made the steering too heavy for my liking. So I have decided to go with the uh, 26 inch, uh, 26 inch tires. Essentially it's the same setup I have on my Kodiak. And as if you see the height wise, they are essentially the same size. Sorry. So you can see they're essentially the same size. So the 27 from factory are really more like 26. So we'll be going with the 26, 9, 12 in the front and, and the 26, 12, 12 in the back, just like the Kodiak. So we have the Kodiak over here, which has the same setup. I'm hoping that this should be make it. This should make the ATV more fun to ride, make it lighter on the steering. Um, I've already done one one side. I wanted to do a quick video of uh, what all it entails. So, uh, working on that. Right. So the issue is. The issue is that we have this protection covers and they are designed for 14 inch rims. So to put a 12 inch rims, they won't fit. So I got these covers from Yamaha that are designed for a, for a 12 inch rim. So to do that, we need to take, we need to take this, these off, the hubs off, the brakes off, this off, and then there are bolts that are hiding in there. They are uh, right there. So that's what we need to remove in order to do that. So we need to open up this nut over here the wheel nut or the excel nut and you see there is a notch over here so i'm going to try to get that notch off without destroying the nut if i cannot then i'm going to put an impact on it with a with appropriate force and uh, in the process you pretty much end up breaking this notch but you can still put a put a red red thread locker and use that, reuse that nut. If not, if I destroy it completely, I've also, as an insurance policy, I went and got some new nuts, just in case if I destroy the nut in the process. So that's what we're gonna do. 
Now keep in mind, this is the same process if you ever have to change the disc brakes, um, the pads or the disc. So basically you'll have to open these uh, bolts and replace the uh, disc. So that's the process for, for that also. So kind of video that shows you a disc brake uh, or disc replacement also. So that's where I've jacked it up over here with a, uh, so you guys remember I have the, the painted uh, ricochet skid plates. So I don't want to scratch it up with a jack directly on it. So we put a piece of wood over there. So that's what I did. So I'm gonna shut the video down a little bit so I can work on this. And uh, so we need to open this. Then we need to come back over here and we need to open this bolt right here and there's one in the bottom so that will take this off take this off and then we're gonna put the hub remover on it so that way we can pull this pull this thing off so that's what we're gonna do and then replace this thing all right so as you can see I have notched I guess taken down taken up the notch in the process I did put a little bit of a crack in it so that's how this outer ring is designed where it's gonna pretty much crack on you but that's all right it's not gonna do any harm this is the part that actually does the work not not this this part so I did that now what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much I'm gonna put an there we go the nut is out and you can see what I'm talking about it's pretty much gonna break but we will put a we'll put a thread locker on it red or blue is fine I'm gonna put red on that side I put blue on the other side I figured you know red red should be better so that's what we're gonna do all right so once we remove the nut this thing is really hard to hard to come out the disc and the hub right so this is the hub remover you can uh, if you don't have one you can rent it out from uh, O'Reilly's it's actually about 25 bucks if you buy brand new but if you you can buy it from O'Reilly and they have the tool rental policy it's really not rental it's more like borrow so uh, you can just go there pay for it if when you're done you can return it so you can see that over here this is the easiest way to get your hub out instead of messing with it and hammering it and trying to take a pry bar to it and doing all that stuff. Yeah, I know you can see my fancy shop fan in the background, but that's what I got. And there we go, it's out. You can see that. And all we're gonna do is take this thing out. I just hand tighten them. You didn't have to do anything fancy. it put that on the side we're gonna open this this and this right here and remove this and put the new one in and then we can put everything back together and put a new wheel and tire on it and we are good to go the front will be done then we'll move to the back all right so we have this back protection plate in don't over tighten these things um, it doesn't really need that much tightening just gently tight it and really mess with torque and stuff have a pretty good track record of hand tightening it just by feel so I'm going with that you will need a
that's what we're gonna need to open those things up and and tighten them up uh, one thing to keep in mind if you have any confusion about you know what these are and how they go so you see how they're curving on the inside so these things are basically one singular part number on all four corners so let's see the part number here so in case if you are looking to buy you can see it right here it's called a wheel ring and that's the part number and uh, it's all the same part on all four corners um, when you put it on the right hand side it will curve inside when you put it on the left hand side it will curve outside so that's how it is set up so just something to know all right so i have the nut on now all i'm gonna do is get this notch to line up with this and that's all i'm going to tighten up we don't need to tighten it up any more than that that's how it came from factory so just get it up there and you're gonna have to tighten you're gonna have it tight enough i'm just gonna use a big forceful thing over here and uh tighten it up if not i'll put a little bit of impact on it and we don't want to over tighten it more than that all right, so it doesn't matter how nice you are to it, you're gonna end up breaking it. It's just, that's how it designed. You can only use it once. If not, that's how it's gonna be. But I don't think it's gonna be any issue. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. There's red lock tight in there. And the best way to put it in, in the exact space was the, the torque. That's what got it over here because with the hand, with the big ratchet, all I was doing was spinning the tires on the other side. So that's the best way I got it to line up exactly the way I found it. So that should be good, but it shouldn't have any issues with it. And I'll put, we're gonna put this thing on, the brake calipers, and we should be good to put the tires on. And that's how it looks. Okay, here's the final product. I just need to clean up the letters a little bit. And this is how the XTR should have come, or at least should have had an option for people like me who don't necessarily need the Zila mud tires. I know some people may not like this, but I like it. It's a lot easier for what I do. When I was shopping for an ATV, this is exactly the setup, tires and wheels setup that I had envisioned. But I like the XTR, I ended up buying it. And uh, oh, it was a little too much for my use. It's perfectly fine if you all you're doing is riding on the dirt. A lot of people swear by it, and I'm okay with that. I wasn't sure how the black rims would look with the XTR, but if I may say so, it looks pretty good. Uh, again, these are 26 inch tires, same height as the 27 Zilas that it came with. Hi Loki, hi Thor. There are my two dogs in the background, Loki and Thor. That's Doc, my gelding. 
peppy and rain. They like to be in pictures and videos. So as soon as they see me taking a video or a picture, they get in. Anyway, comment uh, down below. What do you guys think? How you like it? Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you don't like it, that's fine. You can let me know that as well. But uh, I, I definitely think that I will enjoy it more. Uh, steering definitely feels lighter compared to the square setup. And uh, I like the way it looks as well. So I'm happy with it. Again, didn't do it for looks. I did it more for functionality and my my use case thanks for watching like it subscribe it and let me know if you guys need any specific videos and stuff like that thank you bye